My brother rescued this Stanley number no. four hand plane from somebody's shed clearance, uh, and he asked me if I wanted it. Of course I said yes, um, but as you can see, it's in rough shape at the moment. The wooden handle at the back is quite loose. It's also thick with rust, as you can see. The cutting iron is in bad shape. And I've already sprayed this with oil, which is why it has a slightly wet look to it, because I couldn't get the lever cap off originally. Let's see if it'll budge now. There we go. Some nice cobwebs in there. This cap iron is badly bent out of shape too. I uh, don't know if you can see that. That should be straight. And I can't get that screw to budge. So in this video, I'm going to convert this Stanley number no. four into a scrub plane for two reasons. One, I already have a Stanley number no. four smoothing plane and I don't need two of them. And two, a scrub plane, if you're not familiar with what one is, is a really useful tool for flattening warped boards quickly. And you might be thinking, why don't I just use my planer thicknesser for that? Well, usually I do, but often I'll have a board that's too wide to fit through my machine, which has a 260 millimeter capacity. So on those occasions, when I want to flatten a wider board, a scrub plane is going to be really useful. Plus, I enjoy using hand tools from time to time. The main way that a scrub plane differs to a smoothing plane is that the cutting iron has a camber along the width of the cutting edge. There are some other modifications I'll need to do though, which will be covered later in the video. Aha! To remove the worst of the rust, I first did a bit of sanding on some 100 grit abrasive paper on a flat surface, and I'm doing that firstly to remove the worst of the loose rust, although I'm not trying to remove all of it here, and secondly because I want the sole of the plane to be flat. Having said that, the sole of a scrub plane doesn't need to be perfectly flat. Flatness for a scrub plane, which is used for removing lots of material very quickly, is much less important than it would be on a smoothing plane, which is used for finer finishing kind of work. I do the same again to the sides, and I also sanded the lever cap. And again, I'm not aiming to remove all of the rust here, just the worst of it. My aim with this project is just to get a tool that works really well. It doesn't have to look perfect and it'd be difficult to do that anyway because of the extent of some of the pitting and damage that this plane has suffered over the years. I also want to clean up the face of the frog and make sure that's nice and flat because the cutting iron is going to be secured down to that surface. and also the base of the frog where it will be in contact with the body of the plane. I put the bent cutting iron into a metal vise to try and flatten it out, but that wasn't such a good idea because it was just bending out of shape. And I found that putting it onto a flat surface and hammering it gave me a much better and more flat result. At this point, to get rid of the rest of the rust in all of the hard to reach areas, I put all the parts into a bath of some vinegar and I'm just using whatever vinegar I could find in my kitchen cupboard which happened to be some out of date white wine vinegar and some distilled vinegar. And I let everything sit for a few hours. Meanwhile I could remove the old finish from the handles as it was badly cracked. I used my scraper for that and some sanding to get down to some bare wood. By the way, if you're interested in any of the tools that I use, there'll be a link down in the description box. For the front knob, I took the lazy option and popped it onto my lathe just to make sanding and refinishing really quick and easy. The finish I'm using here is shellac, which will reseal the wood and bring out the grain. I denibbed between coats with some 400 grit wet and dry paper to keep things nice and smooth and added four coats in total. So I've left this a couple of hours and my container doesn't seem to be quite watertight, <laughs> but it's not leaking too badly. So my random vinegar solution worked really well. The rest of the rust just wiped away really easily.
Then I washed all of the metal components in warm water to clean off the vinegar. Otherwise, the vinegar is going to continue to eat away at the metal over time. Then I thoroughly dried everything off and applied a thin coat of oil using my oiler, which is an oil-soaked rag tightly wrapped up inside a spray can lid. And all of the moving parts got a dab of oil. I polished up all of the solid brass parts by putting them into the chuck of my drill and I used a scouring pad to make them shiny. I masked up the cast iron on the sole of the plane and then sprayed on some black spray paint to the inside to help freshen it up. And I decided to try and restore some of the shine to the lever cap, so I sanded through the grits, starting with 240, then 400, then 600, and then I charged up a buffing pad with some green polishing compound and used that in my drill to add some shine. Now to reshape the blade, and first I set my compass to 180 millimeters, and I use that to mark up onto a scrap piece of plywood the arc that I'll use to regrind my cutting edge. I cut that out of the band saw and then used a marker pen to draw the shape. And I can then set my grinder support table to a 25 degree angle and start reshaping. You can see here I have a nice burr, so I can then move on up through the grits using my diamond stone and whetstone, and I needed to do this by hand rather than using my honing guide. If you'd like more information about my process for sharpening or my grinding setup, I'll leave links to videos about those in the description box below. I then charge up my leather strop with some polishing compound to hone the edge even more. Probably not necessary on a scrub plane cutting iron, but I did it anyway. And then I can remove the burr. And as you can see, it's nice and sharp. When I came to add the cutting iron to the cap iron, I found that some reshaping of the tip would be needed, so I used a file for that just to remove the corners, and that allowed me to position the tip of the cap iron a lot closer to the cutting edge. Then I can start reassembling the plane. Here I'm adding the screw that advances the position of the frog from front to back, and this may need some adjustment later on. And I can secure the frog to the sole. And then the depth adjuster goes on, which is reverse threaded. I can then add the handle at the back. And then the cap and cutting irons can be fitted. I make sure that the lever is pivoting them correctly. And that looked good, so I added the lever cap. By the way, if you want more detail about how I like to set up my hand planes for best performance, I have a video all about that too. I also have another video about how I restored my Stanley No. 4 smoothing plane. I'll link to both of those in the description box below. At first, the depth adjuster was too tight for my liking, so I backed it off because I like to be able to twist it with one finger. And then I can add the front knob. When I first tried it out, it worked okay, but I found that I wasn't able to take shavings as big as I'd hoped. So I ended up doing one more modification, which was just to open up the mouth of the plane a little bit, which will help the plane to cut bigger shavings. I did that with a file, and I didn't take much material off here at all, maybe about one millimeter from the middle of the mouth to camber it slightly, similar to the cutting edge. And that's the plane complete, and if you'd like to see me use it to flatten a board, then I have another video all about that, where I make a large cutting board with a wainy edge. If you'd like to check it out, there's a link in the description box below. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe to my channel for more weekly woodworking videos. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can do so on PayPal, Patreon, or YouTube channel membership. Links to those in the description box below. And on Patreon and YouTube channel membership, you can also get early access to my videos, free project plans and cut lists, some exclusive videos, and a name credit at the end of my videos. Thanks for watching. Woof! Woof!